Now then, morning. So it's currently Saturday morning. It is 10 past seven. Uh, just got to my first job, which is at Veolia at Hollyhead. So I left home at five this morning, two hours, 10 minutes from rear, so it's not too bad. Uh, I've got a coolant fault to look at and an engine management light on and they think it's pressurised in the diesel tank. So that'll be an interesting one. And then after here I've got a job at Salford to do, it's just a daytime running lights change on my way back, which ain't too bad. Um, now then, I've had an absolute nightmare. Editing nightmare. So, Thursday's video, I edited it Thursday night, and then uh, I thought, I'll upload it, and then I thought, no one, because I'm falling asleep. I'll upload it Friday. So I uploaded it last night and then uh, once it uploaded to YouTube, I looked at it and I thought, hmm, that's only 14 minutes long. It should be longer than that. So then I watched it on YouTube and I put videos missing. So I then took the video back down. I thought, right, we'll re-edit it. And then I realized I've deleted half the videos off my phone to keep my stories down. But anyway, I went into recently deleted and managed to find the videos again and put them back. So that's today's job when I get home. And then I've got Friday's video to edit, which when I looked at that yesterday on the footage on the phone when I got home, my camera got wet when I was doing the job. And because I'm such a professional, I wiped the lens with my thumb. Um, when you look back at the footage, it looks like my head's about year big, and yeah, it doesn't look good. But I'll upload it anyway because it's uh, quite an information, quite a bit of information on that video. Um, I'll upload it anyway. I can only apologise for the quality. However, it is what it is, isn't it? It's real life, so I don't have a cameraman or a director, so I'm having to muddle my way through it and it's uh i don't know sometimes i find the editing quite easy and other times i struggle with it i don't know if it's my laptop or not because uh, i'm using an old macbook i've got to edit which is a couple of years old now so anyway it'd be right right i have got to ring a gentleman when i get here because apparently the site's going to look like it's locked up which it does look like it's locked up and he'll come open the gates for me well, I can't see anybody, so mm, hopefully somebody won't be far away and they'll let me in. Yeah, so right then, let's get his phone call made and see if we can uh, access his vehicle and uh, we're going to have a look at it. Right then, so the man's turned up, we've got some keys for a truck. Anyway, um, just had a chat with the bloke there and uh, what he was saying was Mercedes come out for it yesterday and uh, they wanted to recover it back to their workshop um, because it's got a coolant level loss issue. Yeah, it's full of coolant. So straight away to me, that's telling me the coolant level sensor's faulty, which is a common fault on these Iconics. Um, now, he also said the lad thought it was pressurizing at a tank a bit as well. So what we'll do, I'm just scanning it now with laptop, uh, see what faults it's coming up with. And then what we'll do then, we'll change the level sensor. And after we've done that, we'll run it up to temperature then and see if it's pressurizing any tank. Um, if it is pressurizing any tank, there's a chance it could be compressor head bypassing. So what we do then is take the main compressor pipe off and once the compressor pipe's off, if it doesn't pressurise the other tank then there's a good chance it's compressor red so yeah not a bad little job for a Saturday I haven't got a compressor red with me so I can't change that uh, but I can change the coolant sensor I've got one of them with me so yeah so that's all the laptop's telling us it's finished scanning so I'll just spin it around so you can have a look so there you can see there you can see there's no faults in it, just engine coolant level low. So we'll crack on, we'll get that swapped, and then uh, 
we'll try again with it and get it up to temp. So the engine coolant level sensor sits just here, which you can't see it, and then it's got a little bit of loom and a plug. So it's literally, I'll just show you, I've got one here in my van. That's a coolant level sensor there. So all you do is squeeze them tabs, lift it out, and change the plug. So let's crack on with that. Right, so that's a plug for it. The loom comes round and the sensor is literally just sat at the back of your finger. Hard to get the picture up, but right, let's crack on and get it changed. If you just press that in there, pops out. So then we have the new one. You have to just sit it in, get it click in there, put the loom around, plug it back into that, sit that plug back in there. Let's sit the loom back in. Now it is showing coolant level low on the dash, so and the coolant is full. I've checked that. So hopefully now that coolant fault has gone. So what we'll do, I'll put cab back down. Usually I do them at cab down. But I just popped it up because it's easier to get in. Um, it's just a bit fiddly getting your hands around at times. Yeah, so what we'll do now, drop cab back down and uh, we'll get up to temper and uh, see if that editor tank is pressurising or not. Right, so that fault's gone off the dash now. Um, but I'll just show it, it's telling me on the laptop, it's still showing engine coolant level low. So, in theory, when I go to this now, this should be a stored fault. So we read that again. That laptop works up. Stored, there you go. So it's a stored fault and mill, which means it's put the engine management light on. So we'll clear that fault now, as it's stored and not active. Ignition, ignition off, please wait. No fault codes. So now, all we need to do now is run it up to temp. So that could be the next job. We'll get it up to temp and uh, make sure it's, uh, see if it's pressurising at a tank or not. Uh, let's go for that full air suspension, no faults. So there's no faults at all in that truck now. So let's crack it up and see what happens. I've got a feeling that was the only issue with it was the uh, fuel level sensor. We turned to bad job for Saturday morning. So we'll get up to 10 and then uh, we'll get on up to the next job. Eh? Yeah, that'll do for me. I just tried, uh, thought, oh, why it's going up to 10? We'll just fly the drone. And get some pictures off the drone. Can't do that. Restricted fly zone. I think there's an air base or something around here. So. Oh well. Maybe next time, somewhere else. Right, so that's that job done. Level sensor changed, run up to temp, not pressurising any tank at all. So I don't know how rough it's got a pressurising diesel tank and a level sensor for diesel tank faulty. Anyway, you never know. Mercedes have been out to it, so Mercedes have probably told them that. But believe it or not, they wanted to recover that back to Mercedes to repair that bit of a fault. So yeah, we're pretty much lost for words on that one. But anyway, it is what it is, isn't it? So, right, that's that done, 8.25 now. And uh, we'll get over to Salford and get this uh, daytime ring light changed. So that'll probably be more of an in-depth job than that, because I think we're going to take a bumper panel off to get to it. 
remember correctly, if it's two screws at front, you can't do it without taking corner panel off, so it'd be right, won't it? It's uh, not bad for a Saturday, so right. No time for talking, let's get going. Right, so we're at Salford uh, on my job card it says daytime running light which is what the customers reported and it's not it's that side light bulb up front so that took me over about two minutes to change so yeah so that'll do so what we'll do now we'll get off home that's it done speak to you in a minute anyway Yeah, so that's that. Nice easy job for a Saturday, that. Level sensor and a bulb. I'll do for me. Um, just gonna do uh, a couple of comments. So, Husey Tube, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah, that video you were on about the other day with the damage on the truck. Um, yeah, it's like anything. Um, if you go and hire a car or a van off a company and you damage it, you're gonna get charged with the damage on it, aren't you? So. Obviously, take insurance out to cover it, and uh, I imagine all these operators do. So, yeah, uh, damage does get charged. Not that that's got anything to do with me because I don't get involved with the political side of the job. I just repair it. So, yeah. And uh, Stephen Kerry, uh, Steve Kerry, or Stephen Kerry. Anyway, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, as I was saying, on about laptops, and uh, that's the way that it is now. Um, it's all about the laptops on this job these days. If you've not got a laptop, you're not doing so much. You know, even down to the video from yesterday. Laptop out, adjusting parameters stuff on a, on a, on the uh, bin list. So yeah, it's all about parameters. Uh, it's all about laptops. Sorry. You tell it's Saturday. Can't we? Huh? Can't get my words out. Anyway, um, and I'd just like to say um, we have a young lad in the garage, Mackenzie and uh, he was saying the other day that his dad started watching videos so big shout out to Mackenzie's dad he's doing well he's doing good uh he's not really worked with me so much he's been working in the lot at workshop but from what i've heard when i've been dancing out at workshop lads doing all right so credit to you matt anyway uh on that note i'm gonna wrap this up get myself home get some breakfast well some dinner because it's 11 o'clock now so by the time i get home it'll be half 11 quarter to 12 grab some dinner and uh, start editing so we'll see you on the next one uh, thanks for watching don't forget like subscribe comments down below and ding the bell for notifications and uh, we'll see you all soon Sunday tomorrow so no work tomorrow I don't work Sundays unless it's a call out um, yeah see you later